everyone, this is Eileen from Eileen Steps and today we are going to be doing a financial audit to see where is my money going. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. I am a cash budgeter and stuffer here on YouTube. And I am working on paying off debt as well as building up an emergency and sinking funds. So if that is something that you're interested in and you haven't already, please consider subscribing below. Okay, two things. One, you're seeing this Sunday, but it is still Saturday night, the 14th. It's a couple hours after I did my live. If you remember, I told you at the beginning of my live that right before I went to hit the live button, my whole stand for my ring light basically curved fell apart. Well, in order to be able to film, I basically have it sitting on a pile of books. And if you see these black metal bars, my guess is I won't be able to totally put them out of the shot. That's actually the bottom of the ring light ever so carefully resting against my tiny little desk to get this shot. And as long as nothing moves, <laughs> We should be okay, but it took me like 25 minutes to set this up. Literally every joint of this light just decided to fall apart, even the joint that holds the light. It's like the whole thing just said, you know what, I quit, I quit and just stopped. And I'm really sad. I, I guess I'm gonna have to see if I can buy a new stand for this light, but again, it's just something else that costs money. And so I'm just like, oh, why is things always costing money? And the money is on my mind. So I think it's very good that we now try out a financial audit and see where my money is going. My miscellaneous money, because if you guys probably recall, every time I do my budget, I leave some money in the bank for miscellaneous. And the goal of that is really to cover anything that maybe I didn't account for. More often than not, I am still in the bad habit of sometimes spending it willy nilly, like coffee, maybe I'll go eat out, kind of having that thought like, oh, I still have 200 in the bank, right? So I'm still struggling that way. And I think because of that, instead of that being an emergency thing that I can keep carrying over, I'm spending it without accounting for it. And that needs to end. We gotta tighten up. And that is what we're about to figure out today. This was definitely inspired by those Caleb Hammer videos because somehow those started showing up on my feed, those financial audit videos. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so I thought I'd do it for myself. Okay, that's so what we have. I was trying to make like a nice template, but again, I was I couldn't think of how I wanted to do it. And that was like holding me back. So I just said, you know what? Let's just use a notebook, who cares? I have my bank statements run like in the middle of the month for some reason. So I have a June 17th to July 19th. So like June to July, July to August. And the newest one is August to September. These are gonna be particularly painful to look at because this is on the summer months where if you guys remember, I was switching jobs, I was working six days a week, I was working a lot, and then this last one was when my ex was moving out. So basically, I was out for longer hours, I was spending money more willy-nilly, I kind of got back into a bad habit again because I was busy, so I think it's gonna, you know, I think this might be more true to what my normal spending would have been before I even started budgeting and the habit that I obviously will slip back into. First thing I'm gonna start with is bills. And this is gonna be the money that I've already accounted for. We have June to July, July to August, and August to September. And I'm really sorry if this is really hard to read. I just realized that I wrote that really sloppy. For bills, we're gonna just highlight it in good old fashioned yellow. Here we go. All right, you guys, so the very first step is done. I have highlighted in yellow all my bills or the things I've budgeted for. Like for example, there was a 78 chart here on Amazon. But if you remember in that budget video, I actually budgeted for that because I knew I had that stuff in the cart. So if it was budgeted and accounted for, 
gas, because that's always accounted for, those and bills, that's what I put in yellow. And my cap rolled away, of course. Well, first, my first highlighter died, and my second highlighter, <laughs> I have no idea where the cap just rolled off to, so just going through the bills. I was kind of noticing what other purchase, oh, I missed a purchase. I was noticing what other purchases I had and some kind of theme I see, shopping and eating out slash coffee. So I think those are gonna be the two big things I do other than my bills is like unaccounted for shopping. And sometimes it really is like, oh, I forgot I need this stuff, and so I go buy it. You know, it's not always frivolous shopping. Maybe I'll do all the highlighting first instead of going back and forth since I'm already here and I just kind of discuss what I was gonna do. Let's move on. All right, we are back and we have our three big offenders, let's just say. All right, bills we already know about, we hear about it every budget, the shopping, yeah, but I think what we all really wanna know is where's all my money going and how many times am I eating out that I'm not accounting for. Like, let's get to the dirt because I think that's what we all wanna know, including me. I almost don't wanna face the music because I already know what my habits are. Like, we all know what our habits are and I think we all try to do good. We all, especially when we're trying to like make big financial changes, but as the saying goes, Old habits die hard, and this is no exception. Let's look at the, the nitty gritty here. So again, pink was the bills, or I'm sorry, I'm already saying it wrong. Here's, this is June to July, okay? June to July. So June to July, again, yellow is all of the bills, budgeted items, the things I actually accounted for in my budget. Pink is shopping and green is fast food. So this one actually had more shopping than anything else, but I think that might have a lot to do with the fact that I was having to outfit my new office. So some of the shopping is like JCPenney's, okay, whatever, that was probably clothes. So I have a lot of these kind of things over and over, Albertsons, I have two from JCPenney's and I'm like, I don't even remember going to JCPenney's twice. I remember going once and I got like workout clothes and the other one, I'm, I might have just bought new clothes because I had a new job, you know, just trying to look nice. Still, I didn't account for that. So I have Albertsons, Walgreens, Albertsons, Albertsons, Lowe's, Target, Walgreens, Albertsons, Sam's Club. This was for work, but I said anyway, another Albertsons, Walgreens, Sam's Club, and Ross. A lot of excessive shopping, we'll total that up. And then the fast food, same things over and over again because I pretty much go to the same spots. I think you guys may or may not know I'm on the carnivore diet. I only eat meat because I am doing the carnivore diet for my Hashimoto's. It has been very life-changing. However, I pretty much, if I'm out, out and about and I get hungry, there's only a certain places I go because I can get like a burger without a bun, a grilled chicken without a bun, you know, kind of stuff like that. The fast food, we had Starbucks, some $10 vending thing, which I can't remember. I think this might have been the car, a car wash. Frogurt, Wendy's, Wingstop. So Frogurt, is that on my diet? For, not really carnivore, but there is a frozen yogurt place right by my house that has like no sugar frozen yogurt. And for a while over the summer, I got into a habit of, but man, every time you go, it's like $13. So I have Froger, $13.43. Did I budget for that? No. Did I need to spend money on that? No. Was it a waste of my money? Yes. Wendy's, it was probably a burger or something, $8. We have Wingstop, because you can get like the plain wings and it's pretty much on your carnivore because there's no sauce. 16.86. And again, Wendy's, 13.17. Java Joe's, so coffee, right? Coffee, eating out, coffee, eating out. 
that was June to July. And I can, it's like I could stop right here because I think at this point we see where my money's going. We see when I'm like, I've got $200 in miscellaneous. And then next budget, I come around and say, hey guys, I have $43 left in miscellaneous. I think now we're seeing where that money's going. I guess the next step is how are we gonna change it? So July to August, like I said, the summer's gonna look horrible because I was in the meat of switching jobs, working two jobs, and then I was out of the house more, working more, and I was just eating out more. The shopping pretty much looks the same, like extra gas station, so I must've ran out of gas for more than I budgeted. Again, Walgreens, gas station, Sam's Club, Albertson, Sam's Club, Target. This might've been for work because of the price. Walmart, Sam's Club, Sam's Club, Target. Speedway, that was probably gas or something, or beef jerky, like again, something in a pinch because I was hungry. Target, okay. So I didn't account for all that shopping. And the pink, the green is the, so there's more pink on this one as well. No, there's a lot of green, so here we go. It's gonna be the same thing over and over again. Wendy's, Sonic, McDonald's, the cowgirl, which was drinks, not even a work thing. This one is painful, the bull ring, that was a lot of money. Taco Bell, Frogurt, Java Joe's, so coffee, frozen yogurt, Dion's, I can get meatball sandwiches there and eat the meatballs out of the bread. So I use sometimes do that in a pinch. Starbucks, Java Joe's, so coffee, 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 meatballs, frozen yogurt. I went through this kick of going to get crunch wraps, even though they were like totally not what I'm supposed to eat on carnivore. I don't know what it was. I was just craving them for like a few weeks. I don't, this bull ring is steaks. Okay, so again, we can see the theme, right? Well, let's do one more because this one I think might just look the worst. I mean, look at all that green. Now this was August to September. This was the period that my ex-husband was moving out. So I was kind of, I was trying to like not be in the house. I was trying to, cause he had to like kind of move through the whole house and pack. And I just was trying to let him do his thing. And I was just kind of staying out of the house. I was working and staying at work all day, you know, just kind of creating space. But because of that, I was also not preparing to be out of the house for 10 and 11 days. So this is about what's happening here. So just to keep the theme, we'll start with shopping. I had something at Sam's Club. We had Target again, right? Albertsons, Albertsons, Walmart. I never usually shop at Walmart because Walmart's literally by my work. If I need stuff for work or I need to like go get some snacks, I've been going there. It's just really fast. And I've uh, Target, Ross, Speed, so gas, Speedway, that was $50. So I'm guessing that was me running out of gas and not budgeting enough. Sam's Club, Albertsons, Target, 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 <laughs> Sam's Club. That was a nervous laughter. Uh, okay. So we see a theme of I need to save more money for shopping, clearly, or control my shopping. So if I'm starting to be like, oh, I really need this for work, or I really want this for myself, if it's not a necessity, I think I should start making a list to put in for next budget. That would be the smart thing to do. That's kind of what I've been thinking as I sit here. Now the painful, so much more green because like I said, I was out of the house all day, but I didn't prepare. So we got. Taco Bell, McDonald's, Java Joe's, Taco Bell, Frogurt again, Java Joe's, Dion's, right? So we got, that would have been a crunch wrap, the ones I shouldn't have been eating. Probably was a hamburger, coffee, frozen yogurt, coffee, Dion's is always just the meat. They have like meatball subs with huge meatballs and then I just eat the meatballs out. Starbucks, so we got more coffee. Panera, that was probably coffee. Oh, that was actually a, a morning that I went. I can't remember why I had to leave the house, but I went and got breakfast and coffee. So Java Joe's is coffee, chicken, church is chicken even. So this, <laughs> there you go, I fried chicken. Claw footies, this purchase of 4060 wasn't even one I want. This was, I'd actually got $20 back from this. This was a gift for one of my coworkers. I went and picked it up and paid for it. And then my other coworker who split it with me gave me cash, but the cash basically just went in my wallet and got spent, never put it back. 
I don't think. Sometimes I am really good about putting cash back in the ATM. This was like, I wasn't even planning on this, but so there you go. And this is one of those things, like I knew I had miscellaneous money. I knew I could throw $20 towards a present. Then I ended up paying for all of it. And then take the cash that I got back I was not responsible and not, I do not remember if I put the $20 back. If I did, then it wouldn't be a big deal, but I don't think that I did. Although I might have, because I have an ATM deposit here for $70. There's a good chance I put that back and if I had other cash, because I do try to do that. Anyway, Starbucks, Taco Bell, Define Fitness. That's where um, my gym, but there's a charge for water. And that's it. That is the meat and bones of everything. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write it out, add up our totals and see what our three month average is. This is going to take a long time. So I'm going to do this. I'm gonna let the camera run in case I decide to do like a little montage of this, but chances are I'm gonna cut through most of this and see you back when the final thing is done. Okay, you guys, I am back. We have all of our categories written out and eating out actually doesn't look as bad on paper as it did on these, except for August to September. The other thing though, I was like, oh, this doesn't look as bad as I thought. I could have sworn I did more trips. And then I remembered another bad habit I have that is affecting the shopping category. So the reason why I budget 175 to 200 a paycheck for food, but I still hit up Target and Albertsons over and over again is because my habit is I have the cash for food. So sometimes I use the cash for coffee and eating out and then I run out of money and then I dip into my debit card to pay for food. Like if I need eggs or something. That's another bad habit I have. And as you can see, they're playing off of each other a little bit, but okay. However, I know for a fact in September, I made just under 9,000. I think in July, August, I made almost 8,000. And then this was like seven. Right now I'm ranging between seven to 9,000 a month. I take out taxes, right? You budget so that I still, I do like, especially August, September. I mean, I had a lot of money, 9,000, almost 9,000. It was like just shy of 9,000. And I did take out several thousand for taxes, but that still left me with like six, 7,000. It doesn't surprise me though, to see that even though my August bills are going to be higher because I'm now paying rent on my own, my spending also, as you can see, went up. And I think, again, there's two factors. I think the first factor is I was trying to stay out of the house. I was buying stuff that I needed for the house, maybe being a little careless because I knew I had more money. I think that's just a reality. All right, final step is we're gonna add all this up and we are going to get our grand totals and our average of what we're spending. And then from there, we're gonna figure out what did, what changes do I need to make to my budget? You start including some of the stuff that I do. I can just leave that miscellaneous money alone in the bank because the whole point again is if for it to be maybe something I didn't plan. It's not really meant for shopping trips because I spent all my food money on coffee, right? That's not what it's meant for and that is the habit I am in. I clearly see that now. Now we're gonna do our totals. We're gonna have the category. We'll have month one. We're just gonna switch it to month one, month two, and month three now. Which is gonna be July, June, July, July. <laughs> June, July, July, August, August, and September. And then we'll have our totals. Wow, how did I spell totals? Don't ask. Our big categories were our bills and our budgeted items. Well, I just, I just spelled budget wrong, but I've literally been doing YouTube pretty much all day at this point. So I think my brain is fried. Um, then we had shopping, really, like I said, the big three for me and eating out. Go ahead and get our three month individual totals. And then this is gonna be average and total. I wanted to get a three month average and 
a total of what I spent on these categories over three months. I actually just went all around my house looking for my calculator, not realizing like where in the world could it be? Then I remembered I organized my YouTube office and I had that bookcase, which you probably saw on the live. And I put all my YouTube stuff there, including my calculator, which had a total spot. So my calculator was chilling in its spot that I made for it. Meanwhile, I ran all over the house. <laughs> Now we're gonna start calculating. And we are starting once again with the bills. And here we go. All right, you guys, I am back. I think we solved the riddle of where my miscellaneous money went. I actually got really quiet towards the end of this. I would say that by the time I started calculating, eating out, um, there was like a somber reality of what's happening here but i've also had quite a few thoughts and ideas so the first is i wanted to get the total for the month again when i have my paychecks what am i spending month one bills and budgeting was three thousand eight hundred and thirty eight dollars and ninety nine cents those were dollars that all had a purpose that were budgeted and accounted for these two are the unaccounted for ones. So then I added four seventy one sixty eight for shopping, and then eating out was sixty one seventy nine. So for the June July total budgeted three thousand eight hundred and thirty eight ninety nine, but my actual spending was. $4,372.46. So when you minus out what I accounted for, there is a difference of $533.47 in the month of June, July that I did not account for. That's a lot of money. That's half a grand. And because of the way that the, this, so this would have been, each of these is actually almost covering three budgeted cycles because it would have hit the 15th of the month, the first of the month, and the 15th. I mean, they're they're kind of crossing over. It's kind of weird. Well, even if I count two, I don't know why my bank does it that way. It's super confusing. But yeah, basically miscellaneous money, right? So if I budget a couple hundred for miscellaneous, then it's pretty much almost always all gone. I have 25 left. So that was June, July. I, there was 533, which if I divide that by a week, that is about 133.37 a week that I am spending above what I'm budgeting for. Let's keep going. Now we're on to July, August, so let's see what those are. So bill budgeting came out to $3,426.38. That's again, every dollar that has a purpose, pays my bills, gas it's it's accounted for then the unaccounted shopping was 467.57 although i can't remember which one of these had the, the big sam's club trip of two something i think it might have been in this one so you know it's skewing it a little but that's okay because as we see it's still a theme i think the theme is things always come up you know so even if it's july was different because i had to buy a work purchase the holidays are coming so is it going to be any different when i have to buy gifts not really right so even though some of these things are a one-off and it's throwing off the numbers when i look at the general theme there's kind of always something like this month is going to be taking riley to the vet that's kind of something so next december is going to be paying for renewing my liability insurance. So there's always something, so it's probably always gonna look, as we see, things pretty much look about the same, even though they're different. Okay, 467.57 for shopping. In July, August, eating out was 328.07, and that was that big trip dinner that I bought. Total spending was $4,222.02 for the month of July. Then again, you think I made about $8,000, right? I took out about $3,000 or so. I was trying to take out the 30% for taxes. I spent $4,22. I threw some in savings, and then there you go. Um, everything is back to like $25 miscellaneous, right? So my budgeted amount that I actually counted for, again, was $3,000. 
$426.38. My actual amount that I spent was $4,222.02. Minus out what I actually accounted for in my budget, we have another unaccounted for amount of whoa, $795.64. This is where my money's going. I mean, this unaccounted stuff, that could have paid off two of my smaller credit cards. And I, I've just been sitting here thinking that like, oh my gosh. I am definitely having an eye-opening moment, let's just say. All right, so August. My total bills for August, again, the bills, gas, budgeted, needed expenses. I think I have my OT renewal in here as well, so I had to pay for my OT renewal, OT, all that stuff. So anyway, it was $3,968.56. Shopping came out to $717.42. I think part of that was because I was buying stuff I needed for the house, but part of me is like, what was I doing? And then eating out was $171.37. So my total spending for August, September cycle was $4,857.35. I budgeted $3,968.56. Those are all the dollars that got a purpose. However, I completely went over by almost a thousand this time. Like, whoa, $4,857.35. The difference there is, there we have to take out the 3,96,856. The difference there is a difference of $888.79. That, that's literally an extra chunk of credit card payments. Over the course of, again, it's weird, sorry my bank cuts the month in half like this, but half of June, July, August, and half of September, so, you know, it's still three months even though it's like half of one month and half the other month. I spent a total of $2,217.90 in unaccounted, unbudget for money. That's like about 12 weeks, so if I divide that by 12, we're looking at an average of $184.83 of excessive spending I'm doing a week between shopping trips, maybe things I didn't think about when I did my budget, gifts, going out, eating out, not being prepared, being disorganized, right? Buying something on my personal card I should have bought on my business card. That's a lot, okay. I also did the totals and the average. So, so far in that summer period, I spent 11,233 on bills, which was like, wow. Most of my money goes to bills. 1,656.67 on shopping as a total during that period and 561.23 on eating out. That Those are, my average is 3,74,464 for bills which again is you know that's a necessity that's the that is mm, there's not much i can change there these are the two i spent a monthly average of 552.22 on shopping stuff which okay just completely blew my mind and i know again i, I can see myself taking trips to target taking you know i know that i'm doing these things then an average of 181.08 a month eating out, which again, I see myself doing these things. Did I put those two together? 552.22 plus 181.08? No. So I'm doing excessive things that I'm not accounting for is 733.30 on average a month between shopping and eating out. Um. Like, I'm sorry, I just had a moment where I was like, what am I doing? Again, it's average. And again, some things were paid back for, but you know, we're not, I, I just, it's too much to, I mean, this is just, like I said, there's always something. Adding that by 12 average, it's about $61 a week 
and unaccounted for shopping and eating out. So that's a lot and we can see how much it adds up to drastic amounts, right? But, and the total is insane, and now we can see this is where my miscellaneous money is going, right? So this is two weeks, so if you times that by two, there's $122. So if I leave in $150 for my miscellaneous, and then that two week period, I spend about an average of 122 of it, that's why I come back to you next budget and say, I have $25 left in miscellaneous. You kind of see what's happening now. I feel like this was really eye-opening because it kind of made me think about, like as I was looking through the lines, I was thinking about where, what did I do that day? What did I do that day? What are my habits? So I've created habits that need to be changed. One is I've gotten into this habit of getting a second coffee a day and I'm buying it, but I have a to-go mug. There's no reason why I just can't make my second coffee at home and bring it in the car. So I think um, this is ripped off from a denomination page. So these are some things I'm going to try to cut some of the spending. One is going to be make second coffee at home and to go mug. The other thing is going to be maybe leave myself a hundred for unplanned trip. So basically I'm trying to budget in this. If I'm taking out 122 a, an average a cycle between shopping and eating out, maybe I could try to knock that down to 100. And then give myself 100, which is going to save me on average 22 still doesn't feel right. I mean, I guess if you think about in a month, that's 200 a month. So I'm almost cutting it in half, right? So instead of I'm cutting it more than half, but that's kind of why the thing is with budgeting um, part, so much of it was going to coffee. So if I make my coffee at home, that cuts out um, a lot of this, a lot of this eating out money, leaving a hundred instead of just 20 in my miscellaneous, I'll leave a hundred and that's going to have to discipline myself to say that hundred is for when I need to run to the store and grab something or it's just one of those nights where I just need to eat out, right? I mean, I think I have to account for that because I think to say realistically that I'm never going to need to go get coffee or I'm never going to eat out. I'm, I work long hours these days I'm, and then I have YouTube and I go to the gym, right? There are just days where I'm out of the house all day, realistically, every now and then. It's part of my routine. I try to be prepared. I'm going to try to be more prepared, be, be more prepared with food with daily food, we're making changes. So I think if I can make make a habit to be more prepared with my daily food, these are things I can do at home that'll cut back some of the cost and maybe I'll start budgeting $100 and then when it's done, it's done. So that's part of the discipline. I feel like 100 is still too high, but oh man. Okay. What else can I do? I guess the point is that I need to put, if I can put this in my budget line and account for it, and the money that I leave in the bank can stay in the bank. Because something I really thought would be really great to do is that miscellaneous money, that's my rollover money, if I don't use it, it could turn into a snowball payment. I kind of wanted to do that. But if I only, if I spend it all, right? If I have 150, I spend 122 and I'm left with 25, I mean, I think these are the places I need to start because this is pretty overwhelming. I definitely feel like this has opened my eyes. I kind of see what I'm doing on a daily basis. I kind of understand what needs to be changed. Something I did start this week is I've started cooking chicken and meat the night before. When I get home from work, I'll just throw it in the oven, let it cook, let it cool. And then the next day I have it to take to work. So I've started doing that. I think I'll, so I'll start doing cook meals night before. I think that will help. And maybe just having a hundred hidden in my wallet, but that kind of makes me nervous because I'm still not accounting for it. These big three are kind of hitting it, but all right, you guys, I guess that's it. So that was my financial audit. It was pretty painful. As long as I keep taking all this unbudgeted money, all of this unbudgeted money, and spending it. So instead of have in the past three months, I could have put 2000 towards my credit card debt. 
if I would have just made my coffee at home, made my meals the night before, right? So these are the things that have to change. Don't go out to expensive dinners. Don't, you know, that kind of stuff. These are the things that have to change in order for this to change and the debt to change. So I think we're kind of at the end here, you guys. I hope that this was interesting to you. I, this definitely, I mean, my moods definitely change in the course. I feel more somber now and I feel like reality hit really hard, but I think it's something that I needed to do. I think I needed to see this. I needed to understand how serious I really need to be and that the daily habits I've kind of grew accustomed to this summer are hurting me, not helping me. And it's time to move on. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend and a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.